uh, interested, a really interesting case in a federal appeals court in San Francisco last week. Um, they ruled, this is a, a piece by Sam Knight that was published in the District, District Sentinel, districtsentinel.com, which is a, a, a news co-op here in Washington, D.C. that um, you can actually become part of. They're sort of like, you know, well, you've had, you know, Sam Sachs has been on this program a number of times. He and Sam Knight run the thing, started it. Um, and they say, you know, we're, we're in D.C., so you don't have to be. But here's the article, and this, uh, this is a little uh, chilling. A federal appellate court in San Francisco last week ruled that pass password sharing can be illegal in a case that could have a chilling effect on access to content streaming sites like Netflix, Amazon Prime, HBO to go, and others. The circuit court, in a two-to-one ruling, uh, ruled that a fellow by the name of David Nosel violated the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. This is the CFAA when he accessed proprietary data owned by his former employer. And uh, now the dissent, I thought, was particularly interesting about this. This is to Judge Stephen Reinhardt. This is a two-to-one decision, the three-judge panel uh, in the Ninth Circuit. And in the dissent... He wrote, and I quote, this case is about password sharing. In my view, the CFAA does not make the millions of people who engage in this ubiquitous, useful, and generally harmless conduct into un unwitting federal criminals. We emphatically refuse to turn viola violations of use restrictions imposed by employers or websites into crimes under the CFAA, declining to put so many citizens at the mercy of their local prosecutor, he said. Um, this was a, a, a law that was passed in 1986. We were just entering the computer age. Uh, as uh, Sam Knight writes, as New York Magazine noted, the 1986 statute has been described as heavy-handed and outdated. Federal prosecutors who used it, used it have been a, a, alleged of abusing their powers. For example, I remember Aaron Schwartz. This is a young man in 2013 who committed suicide. He was being prosecuted uh, under the same article, uh, threatened with the prospect of years of jail in jail for downloading millions of articles from JSTOR, the nonprofit digital library. Cyber activist Aaron Schwartz committed suicide in 2013. It also cited the prosecution of journalist Matthew Keyes in April. Keyes was sentenced to two years in jail under the CFAA for giving login credentials to vandals who changed a Los Angeles Times headline for less than an hour. So, I, you know, I can well understand. There's, a, there's, a, there's a, a distinction here that is not quite so clearly made in the article, but, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I get this. That, you know, if I, if I were to say, uh, okay, I'm going to sign up for, for a Netflix account. And, and, you know, and there's a, there's a fee associated with that. Right? This is a business relationship between me and Netflix. And, and part of that business relationship, and I'm, and I'm sure that this is explicit in the, in the uh, yes, I, you know, you, yes, I, sign, I read the agreement and I agree to it that you click when you, when you sign these things. None of us ever read them, but it, it's got to be there. That says that, you know, you can use this account and I'm not sure that the terms of service with Netflix, but I probably shouldn't use them as an example exclusively. Let's say Netflix or Amazon or Hulu or, uh, you know, uh, uh, fill in the blanks, right? Um, some of them allow you to have, you know, an, you know, you and your spouse or you and another person or you and three people in your house or you and your family or whatever. You can get different plans. But and and some of them are just, OK, this is yours. So. Under the law, if I were to say, you know, okay, I want to be able to watch Netflix, and again, just using them as an example, and, and I'm not sure that this is, in fact, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is not the perfect example, but for, for lack of a, just a better example, um, I want to use Netflix. But, you know, hey, I'm going to sh share it with Shane and Danielle. You know, what the hell? They're, they're friends. They work with me. And uh, I'll share it with Chris, too. He's, you know, our call screener. He's a good guy. Uh, here's my password. Yeah, I, I, it's only cost me seven bucks a month. Is, you know, what's the big deal? And we can all watch movies and, um, and things like that. At that point, Netflix 
would have a cause of action against me. In other words, they could sue me for loss of revenue or arguably even for theft. But under the C CFAA, it's a, it, it's a separate crime to have simply given them the password. A separate crime that in the case of Aaron Schwartz, he was looking at like 40 years in prison for. Now that was for, for downloading some stuff. That was another part of the CFAA. But again, the this, this CFAA, this, this law, this 1986 law is very heavy handed. It, which also raises a whole nother issue. You know, so number one, you know, it has, has this law in an effort to protect certain computer websites, computer, you know, publishers, manufacturers, whatever, has it gone way too far? Yeah, it appears to, at least in my mind. But the other is, you know, I, and it's been a while since I've talked about this, but um, in a nation where, where everybody is potentially a criminal, this is, this is how a soft form of, of fascism creeps in. And, and frankly, I, yeah, I mean, in a way, you could, you could make an analogy with, you know, how the experience of African Americans in this country. You know, it's like pretty much everybody every day does something that is, quote, a crime. Changing lanes without using your turn signal indicator. Making a turn without using your turn signal indicator. Weaving a little more than you should as you're driving down the street. I mean, the, the, the egregious stuff is, is like what Tim Scott was talking about, the, uh, the African-American senator from South Carolina, where he made three left turns to get into his apartment complex. Police officer followed him on every single one and then stopped him after the, after the, the, fourth, uh, the, after the fourth left turn, after the fourth turn. And he knew he was being followed. And so he'd been very careful to use his turn signal on every single one and said, you didn't use your turn signal on that fourth turn, when in fact Tim Scott had but he was a black man. And so, you know, there's, there's that, but it, and, and, and then, and that's one of the more obvious examples of this, but the ability of the ability of our government, and this is, this is probably one of the areas where, where I'm probably in agreement more with, with the old fashioned Barry Goldwater conservatives than well, actually, I think, you know, both of us, you know, progressives and conservatives. If everybody, you know, if, if, if password sharing is a crime in and of itself, and it doesn't hurt anybody else, or it doesn't, you know, uh, create a financial hardship or harm for the, the site whose password is being shared, or the person or whatever, if password sharing is... It, you know, if, if, if I want to give my, my CPA the password to my online banking account or something, you know, if, if, if that's a crime, then most of us are criminals, or many of us are. And now we're getting into the realm of, I mean, this is basically how China keeps their people frightened. It's, you know, it's a crime to move in China, but everybody moves. You're supposed to, you're supposed to get permission from the government to move. So, you know, roughly half the nation is in a position where they could just be arrested any old time because they're not where they're supposed to be living. And I'm not sure if this is still the case right now in 2016. I know it was a couple of years ago when we, you know, we had a, a real interesting conversation about this on this program. But the point is that that's, this, this is how governments become oppressive, which is not a healthy thing. I, I think we really need to reconsider the CFAA. We'll be back. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.